Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of the Steve and Mike Show. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me, as always, is my boy, my top dog, my homie G, the one and only Stevie Nicks. Homie, it's great to be back doing this once again. We're back. We're back, Mike Larkin. Yes, we are. It's it's going off again. We were, were overdue again. I was thinking, I was, I was thinking last week, and I was like, you know what? We haven't had a Steve and Mike show in a while. Yep. Haven't. There are a lot of things that have happened, and we haven't haven't given our two cents in them because I know that's what the world is craving for. And I'm just like, <laughs> man, we gotta get another podcast going. So here we are. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think well, it has been one month's time since our last show. And I got to say thank you, as always, folks, for those that do enjoy and listen to our banter and what we do discuss in this particular forum. But God dang it, man, a lot has been going down in the world of news and current events and especially in professional wrestling because Vince McMahon. Oh, my Lord, with all these allegations that came out, the text messages that happened, what he did with Miss Janelle Grant and John Laronitis being involved. Um. I can say this as a professional wrestling fan. Am I shocked? No. Uh, and a lot of wrestling fans feel the way because a lot of the storylines that we saw that were base driven back in the day, knowing how Vince McMahon is, especially when we first found out about the Rita Chatterton incident back in the eighties, where advances were made in the back of a limo to help her get, you know, upper and whatnot with her contract and whatnot. There was a lot of stuff that went down in the eighties until now there was years. I remember when I was a teenager watching raw and we found out about the scandal that happened in Florida, where there was something with him and a woman who worked at a tanning salon. There was just so much that went down so much money being paid off. It really has gone to light to see what kind of monster, what kind of mentally ill individual that Vincent Kennedy McMahon is. It's just been crazy. And a lot has really been brought into light. Yeah. I remember when it first, when the news of the latest, uh, you know, incidents broke and I, and I always, you know, I talk to you every day, as you know, we talk every day and I want to get your immediate reaction on it. <clears throat> and I remember you telling me, um, how you were not, you were not, you were not surprised about the content of some of the things that were alleged here because Vince has, like you were saying, Vince has a history. And like you were also saying, uh, yeah, a lot of those messed up storylines that that you know came from Vince make a lot more sense now. I mean, we went over some of them when we were talking about it, but like it, it it's just like it's a, he is just an insane person. Like it's uh, he's an I think when it, when it happened, I think I said he was an animal, right? Oh yeah, well, I mean, was I shocked like in 2001 when that article he did for Playboy was like, yeah, you know, I, I'm not shocked that Linda didn't know about the affairs. And I'm like, he had some affairs while he was with his wife, Linda McMahon, and, I, I, and I've always wondered why Linda stayed with that man. But, you know, he admitted it in Playboy. I mean, he's done some things. And we mentioned, of course, the incest angle where he wanted to be the father of Stephanie's baby. And he's like, well, then we'll have Shane do it. And it's like, no, like. He came up with a lot of insane ideas. Um, we're going to discuss Ashley Massaro, uh, God rest her soul, a fellow Long Islander, as both Steve and I are. It was horrible, like, what he did to this poor girl, and we're going to discuss that. But, man, like, I mean, even if you look at 2001 again, like we talked about the Playboy scandal that he mentioned in the Playboy magazine, the affairs he had, like Trish Stratus barking like a dog on all fours going into the mania bout with him and his son Shane and the whole thing that happened there. Ah, there's just – there's a lot of stuff, man, and – uh. I mean, making out with the divas, you know what I'm saying? Doing what he did with Candace Michelle live on screen when he was having McMahonism and, of course, the God storyline with him and Shane against Shawn Michaels and God. And then he's like, I'm healing this woman. I'm healing this woman and planting her hands on Candace Michelle's breast. There was just so much that went into a lot of the stuff that he did with the women around the ruthless aggression time period. So, yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, Mike Larkin is not a real Long Islander like I am, first of all, Mike Larkin. You are not, don't lump yourself in with me. You're not a real Long Islander, Mike Larkin, okay? I'm the one that stayed. I'm a real Long Islander, okay, dog? Not you. You're a, you're a poser, dog. You're a poser. <laughs> Second of all, I mean, throughout all the things that, like, you were telling me and everybody else was telling me, like, it really just seems like this was, like, first of all, it seemed like it was, like, an open secret, like, uh, like the Cosby thing. That like everybody in the wrestling world knew what Vince was doing, right? I mean, you tell me, right? They kind of everybody kind of knew about this, but I mean, nobody wanted to do anything, and they were all afraid because it's Vince and Vince kind of. I think with how he also portrayed himself around the office, he was the professional. Like 
Jim Cornette pretty much came out and said, like, you know, well, when he was um when I was there, when I was in the writing team, when I was at Stanford, it was like, you know, it was being in the principal's office. You knew who was in charge. You knew this. He buddied up to the people. There were some people in his circle that knew. But I think when it comes to you look at guys like Vince, I mean, it's he's always had. I mean, again, we could talk about storylines and I'll mention Ashley Massara before we read the affidavit here. Uh, Ashley Massara, like a year before her Playboy shoot, like when Vince was pretty much talking about, you know what I want? I want a Braun Panties gauntlet match with all you girls. And then he stared at Ashley's ass as she walked off stage. There's so many different instances. I mean, making out with Sable in 2003, making out with Trish Stratus, making her bark like a dog, like I mentioned, and making out with the Divas. And I mean, the Stacey Keebler where she gives him a lap dance and then he hires her as assist assistant and then he rolls back in the chair. Uh, there was so many different angles and different avenues of where he took everything. And I think just with a lot of the stuff that we saw from the Attitude Era and really focusing more on the sex appeal side with the women, and then especially towards more of the Ruthless Aggression Era, I think with what we see now and how it's more focally on the foundation of the women and the overall professional wrestling side of things, you see the landscape change, but you could also see like how he booked people, like everybody, like a John Cena always being on top of Randy Orton. He really did not pave the way for a lot of the new stars. And it was really most about the focal point. So I think with the regime that we have now with Triple H, Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon, who are, we are going to talk about within this Ashton Massaro story. Uh, I think it's better. Uh, the locker room morale, they like Triple H, the women like Stephanie because of the women's revolution. And Nick Khan is, you know, the rocks boy who is now on the board of directors. So, I mean, and his tie-ins with Hollywood, if you will. So, I mean, it's a better atmosphere and a better morale now than when, Vince was in charge. And I think a lot of women like Tori Wilson even said it. I'll, I'll compare this with Tori Wilson, who we also made with, out with on TV. Uh, Tori Wilson has said like, because the back in the day, remember they used to do a lot of the bra and panties matches on the bikini contest. Right. So she was like, I stuck through it, but it was mortifying. Like, because I was doing all these bikini contests and I was going out there scantily clad. She's like, I wish what we have now was how it was back then, just because like that's all the women were reduced to was the, you know, the, as they would say, the piss break, the eye candy, the fodder, if you will. And that's all it was back then. So, I mean, you get to see a lot more of the women back in the day speaking out and it's really coming to the forefront. But all, all, all I said though, was like, this is, it's, it was more like an open secret though. Oh, absolutely. Right? absolutely. I mean, people, people definitely knew about it. And it seems like, <laughs> He was doing like a Weinstein thing. That's what I was saying when I was trying to like talk to you through the static. Was like he was, seems like he was trying to do like a Weinstein thing, where like he was definitely leveraging his power to, I guess, take advantage of these women, which I get. I mean, I guess was a thing that he always did, right? I mean, allegedly, but alleged, I- allegedly, yes, yeah, sorry, allegedly. In my personal opinion, yes. I mean, then you hear about the Brock Lesnar side of things, which they've, because this ties into what we're talking about. Like Brock Lesnar being out of the 40 years of WrestleMania, of that portion of the new video game, and just really kind of racing Brock Lesnar because his him to his involvement was, you know, what? Well, hey, Brock, I'll give you a go with her if you sign with us, pal. And, you know, Brock didn't go and, you know, do that. But he did have, you know, the woman send Janelle Grant, the plaintiff in this, send a video, you know, of her just peeing and then he called her a bitch. So there was a lot of stuff that was in that whole thing. I mean, and Brock Lesnar's name was not listed in the suit, but I mean, it kind of narrows it down when it was a former world champion and former UFC fighter. And hello, that was the only one on the roster at the time. So yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really just, it's rough, man. Like it's just, it's the whole thing is just, it's it's rough to. And and, and the, the thing that blew me away too is like this. There's a lot, my God. I, mean, I remember telling you this at the time, like when when it came out. Yeah. There's a lot of that stuff, my God, and like there's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of messages and exchanges. Like, oh yeah, sixty over sixty pages, man. Over sixty. Like pages. that's not that's not like one or two incidents, my God, and that's like a habitual like serial situation here like it's like a really bad luck like oh i know i absolutely know and i mean for me like again people can say what they will about vince and i've always said like you knew who was in charge when vince mcmahon was there and i i applaud him for you know he was the reason why a lot of us got into professional wrestling became fans of it i mean if wrestlemania one didn't take off then he would have been done because he invested all his money in that first wrestlemania but i mean 
when you think of Vince McMahon, you think of the conglomerate and the just the overall business side of what he did with the World Wrestling Federation, now the WWE. Uh, you can say what you will about him pretty much kicking out the territories and him being the only one man in town, if you will. I mean, you can also equate it to WCW and how that went through the Monday Night Wars, but he's done some things. He's said some things. And I think he's always just been that oddball. You know what I'm saying? You could go back to where he talks about, you know, not having the best relationship with his mother and his stepfather and all the abuse that went down there. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, this is just unacceptable. It's cruel and it's horrible. And I don't know, man. It's just like you have those people that you see like Undertaker, who he has such a close relationship with and John Cena and all of them. You see a lot of them say some good stuff about Vince, but also at the same time, the Undertaker, which also ties into this, recently said on his podcast that he's like, you know what? Morale seems to be better. It seems to be more calmer. And I'm like, yeah, dude, because there's no more Vince McMahon. There's no more old man around. And they officially had to get rid of him off that board because going into the Royal Rumble where all this came out just days before the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, Slim Jim, who was one of their top sponsors, pretty much put a pause on their relationship and was like, "Uh uh-uh, like we're not going to be associated with this. And then surely enough, the next day, Vince McMahon was kicked and he's officially gone, 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 gone. And Slim Jim resumed their sponsorship with the WWE. So, I mean, yeah. Step into a Slim Jim. Into a Slim Jim, oh yeah. But yeah. yeah, but that that's it's crazy, man, because you knew if Slim Jim was out, then more would come to follow if they didn't do something. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's also very telling if you watch The Rock ring the bell for the stock, right? And him being on the board of directors of Wall Street, like Triple H is over here, right? And Nick Khan is over here and Vince McMahon. They're all completely away from Vince McMahon. They want nothing to do with Vince McMahon. But yeah, it's, it's all telling, man. And Like I said, I can thank him for what he's done for professional wrestling and being, again, the conglomerate, but he is just a vile, vile human being, and I just hope you're not. So, I mean, do you want to go over some of these these transcripts? Uh, Not not the text. I mean, just just to put it briefly for the people, because it is disgusting. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't read all 60 pages of it because it made me sick. You can't do it. It's just It's it's disgusting. It involves, folks, defecation. It involves uh, sexual orientations and sexual conduct in the office. Just, just, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I'll say. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's a tough read. I mean, it's um, all out here if y'all want to go read it. It's, it's pretty much all I'll say. Like, what is what is he looking at now? Like, what it potentially, like, because he's looking at, like, possibly, like, prison time, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, so, he's... Like, not- what, is, what are they saying that he might be looking at here, like? Ah, I mean, they're doing more investigation, but all we can really say is, like, he's off the board, which is good. Like, no more Vince McMahon, thank you. I mean, he kind of weaseled his way back into it, I mean, after the first thing with the paralegal, you know, because he had the power stock, and then he was trying to come back in, and a TKO was like, no. And then, boom, here we are now. With the whole thing with TKO is, like, they don't want anything to do with that. Like, they, before they even took over, which is TKO merged with WWE and UFC, like, they had nothing with this regime. They had nothing to do with that. So, I mean, they're looking at it internally. So, I mean, I think when you what you have now with the positivity side of things with The Rock and Triple H and Nick Khan and none of the McMahon regime, like, dude, he got rid of, like, all the people with Vince. Like, Kevin Dunn, who we're going to talk about Kevin Dunn when I read the Ashley Massaro thing. Kevin Dunn is gone, who is Vince's right-hand man from the production side of things. He's gone. John Laronitis, who is now playing victim, and is pretty much like, Vince McMahon made me do all these things. It's like, no, go fuck yourself, Johnny. You knew what you were doing, too, as well. You cheated on Brie Bella and Nikki Bella's mom, who was going through cancer at the time. Like, oh you're God. you're a vile piece of shit. You told, and a lot of the people said this about John Laronitis, and for those that don't know who John Laronitis is, because he's also involved in this lawsuit, he's going to sing like a canary and pretty much rat and turn on Vince. Vince made him do all of this. And it's like, Johnny, you're the one who hired all these women in a lingerie catalog in the mid 2000s, which is a lot where a lot of these women came from during the Divas era. You're the one who told AJ Lee that there's a problem here. It's because nobody wants to fuck you, which means she's not attractive enough to be on the TV or pretty much says she's not fuckable, to put it bluntly in layman's terms. But it's oh just, my God. he's another vile one. Like John Laronitis. Oh my God. Yeah. And they got rid of John Laronitis is gone too. He got, he was gone a couple of years ago. Uh, Laronitis is gone. Kevin Dunn is gone. I mean, if Bruce Pritchard knew, you're probably going to see bye bye to Bruce Pritchard. So there's just, there's a lot of variables here. But the main two that are the bad ones here are Vince McMahon and Johnny Ace, John Laronitis. What, um, 
so what is what is like where's Stephanie McMahon and all this? Like she's still with the company now, right? Yeah, but she left because she doesn't want anything to do with her father. You know what I'm saying? Stephanie is gonna come up now as we get to the Ashley Massaro thing. And I'm going to have you react to the interview, too, as well, because there's a lot of footage I want you to react to. And okay. just Lee could stop me at any time. But I wanted to bring this to the table with you here today, homie, since we're doing this. Um, Yeah, Stephanie McMahon that wants nothing to do with her father. She's She came back, and then she left again after the whole thing happened with Vince. And, like, yeah, like, originally when the thing happened in 2022 with the paralegal, the first one, not, not this current one, right? Like, she left because she wants nothing to do with the father, and it was just – mainly Triple H and Nick Khan. And originally it was Triple H and Stephanie because she took over after Vince retired, quote unquote. They pretty much forced him the fuck out. So yeah, she wants nothing to do with it. So it's mostly just Triple H, Nick Khan, The Rock running it. I mean, you got Shawn Michaels doing his thing now. He has a part with NXT. So I mean, she's kind of on the outside looking in. Okay. But she can see through you, my boy. See your two colors. <laughs> I, needed, I needed that laugh. Uh. But yeah, um... So the, the point, the point for, for people who, who don't remember or don't know or don't or like, you know, like the cool kids don't really care about wrestling. Wow. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, the, the 2022 thing was the seven, the seven million dollars in hush money, right? That was the paralegal. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. Well, okay, this that's one, what he's referring to. Yeah. Well, this one that she's um the Janelle Grant, it's like she's going at him now because she signed an NDA, as, as we know. And uh she, he, Vince stopped paying. Like he owed her three million dollars in the hush money, and he only paid her one million. So I mean, I think if she would have gotten that two more million, we wouldn't be here where we are today. But yeah, do you think so? <sighs> to be completely honest with you, yeah, yeah, because Rita Chatterton has been open about what happened in the eighties. And for those who don't know, Rita Chatterton was a female referee in the WWF back in the eighties, and that was the one who I referred to earlier with uh, the advances in the limo that Vince McMahon did at yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, they paid her off. You know, I mean, she told her story, but I mean, they paid her off. She, she just said what happened, but yeah, Rita Chatterton, which they were trying to do something with her. And then he, uh, when all that came out, they he paid her off. So they're not, she, no, Rita Chatterton's not really saying anything much after really just going out there. She said something on a talk show in the eighties, but nothing, none of this really came into light until that thing happened in 2022 with the paralegals. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot more stuff that we're going to play. We're going to talk about the Ring Boy scandal that happened uh, back in the 90s. This was also around the time when he was he did the steroid trial. I'll play the Donahue interview where, you know, the thing where, you know, the, the guy had to sleep with the vice president and, you know, in order to stay with the WWF. It's, it's, it's a whole it's a whole shebang. So where would you like to start? You want me to start with those audios and then make our way back to the current Ashley Massaro? Wherever you, wherever you want to start, Michael Argan, because you got you to dig through this. Michael. We got to get through this. We got to get through this, Michael Argan. Ah, I got to get through this. So <laughs> we will start with this one here. So the Ring Boy scandal, as I pull this up here for all you fine folks. Here we go. All right. We don't usually have episodes that are like this uh, deep. This somber. Yeah. Yeah, so for those that don't know what the Ring Boy scandal was, in the 1990s, this is what Terry Garvin was accused of sexually harassing an underage Ring Boy who was fired from his job after refusing Garvin's advances. He later reached a settlement with the WWF. Garvin, as well as Pat Patterson, and Ring, or Ring announcer Mel Phillips resigned after this incident. So that was the Ring Boy scandal from the 90s that happened back in the day as well. Tom Cole, who was the young WWF Ring Boy at the time, who's the allegations and everything that happened at the time there. Uh, he is no longer alive. I believe he uh, took his own life. God rest oh his God. soul. Uh, then we get to the Murray Hodgson on Donahue, Vince McMahon thing, which I'm going to play here right now. And we're going to find out a lot what happened at that time, you know, wanting to sleep Pat Patterson. There's a whole thing here. So are you ready for me to play this audio, homie G? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Do you believe that sexual harassment exists in your workplace? I believe that there is a possibility of sexual harassment existing everywhere. And I, I asked directly want, if it was in the I World Wrestling Federation. my organization. I don't want it. I'd like to reiterate the question. Do you believe there is sexual harassment amongst the wrestlers or employees at the World Wrestling Federation today? There is a possibility of that. That's why I have these uh, independent investigators to come in. And who are these That's independent what, investigators? Fairfax Group Limited. And I would like uh, you know, to hear what you have to say and everyone has to say. I want to get to the bottom of it. Would you therefore believe that because of all these allegations coming forward and more and more corroborating evidence proving that there's no doubt 
sexual harassment is running rampant in the World Wrestling Federation, that you are definitely going to come public and do something about it. Why wouldn't I? If in fact that is the case, why wouldn't I do something about it? Why would I risk what we have? Because you haven't done anything about it until it became public, because you thought it because was underwater. Because I had no knowledge of it. I made knowledge of it to you when I was fired, and you just blew it off and let me go. You I retained a lawyer. Because you were not very good. You were not a very good announcer. You could not. It's the only reason why you were fired. You could not make the transition from radio to television. That is the only reason why you were fired. I would like to remind you, sir, that I have a two-year contract. Two you years. You also have a clause in your contract that states, and as you know, you were hired on a trial basis. I was not hired you on a trial a basis. Con- you, you do not have a contract? Mr. McMahon, I have a two-year deal in with your contract, firm. contract, you will note, in a clause that states very clearly, and I have it outlined for all to see here today, that you can be fired almost at whim. If, in fact, you're not doing a good job. You did a horrible job. That's the only reason why you were fired. That's it. Maybe I should point out, first and foremost, that might be your inability to uh, pick good talent. It could you be. You had a national Granted. talent search, Vince McMahon. It could be. You advertised in Billboard magazine and across many different media sources, searching for one man that could be the new face and voice of the World Wrestling Federation. You flew me in back and forth four and five different times from Detroit, and you chose over the course of one year of negotiations that I would be the man for that job. I didn't sleep with your vice president. Two weeks later, I'm fired. I also want to point out one very important fact. From your office came a letter to my landlord to verify my employment. From that letter, I must bring this point up. It says, Murray Hodson has a very secure job with Titan Sports and is a positive and productive employee. From your office, just because I don't sleep with your vice president, that qualifies to blow me out of a two-year deal? I don't buy it. said very well but i believe untrue if in fact these allegations against pat patterson whom you won't name are true why not pursue the legal course the legal recourse why not pursue we are doing that right now you are and you are aware that you waited six months after you were let go to bring these homosexual charges against Pat Patterson. Six months you waited. Why? September 14th. If in fact you were fired on the spot, if you were fired for incompetence, all right, why didn't you say right then, why didn't you say, hey, look, Vince, your, your vice president made a pass at me. You never told me that. No one had any knowledge. Human resources had no knowledge of that. Rene Dubose was waiting to hear your story. Why did you wait six months? You asked me for $160,000 today, otherwise you were coming on this program. I'm happy you're on this program. Mr. McMahon, do not try to deflect the truth here. First and foremost. What are you asking for? How much money have you asked for? I have never asked for any amount of money from you. You have tried to buy me off to shut up so I wouldn't come forward and tell of these allegations that's running through the World Wrestling Federation. Your attorney should be consulted. My attorney on September of 1991 came forward to you with a letter direct to you, telling you exactly what happened and that I was discharged wrongfully. I had a two-year contract and that you too were well aware of the fact that there was a homosexual advance made against me. Don't tell me I waited six months. Three weeks later, I was on your rear end. Three months later? Six weeks later. No. The only reason we waited a little longer was because you continued to try to negotiate to buy me out and I wouldn't no, allow it. The fact of the matter is you, if you look into this man's past, the fact of the matter, if you look into your I don't your think we should breaking up the oh, past. I guess not. The okay, issue sure. at hand here, right. Mr. McMahon, okay. is one thing and one thing only. You addressed on Larry That's King Live Friday. It's Friday not the on only CNN. Issue. You went on and you said that I never worked for the World Bodybuilding Federation. I am on a video that is sold around. Right, you have to play the whole thing, my fucker. You, you, you told the country that. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's, he, he's, he, he, he always seemed to, to make, that's what, that's what people like that do. Like they think it, they try to make it seem like they're, they'll be the ones being attacked. And, you know, everybody's just hating on me because I'm, I'm on top. Like that seems to be the air that Vince always had. Like, Oh no, they just hate me because I'm so successful and I'm on top, and this is all just haters, right? Like, like that's what everybody. He's trying um, to paint. He's trying I to mean, paint this guy as a hater. He's like, oh no, 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 you just you got you weren't good enough, and you just you know, now you're mad because you know didn't work out. Um, so I, trying, mean, right? I mean, 
I mean, if you look at the Bob Costas interview where he pointed the finger at Bob Costas and got in his face for like, oh, you know, you're you're promoting, you know, DX and suck it. It's like, well, are that that stuff airs at the nine o'clock hour. It airs at the ten o'clock hour where Raw was on at nine to eleven at the time. And he's like, well, you know, they can change the channel. That was always his thing. They could change the channel. And kids shouldn't be up at that time. So I mean, you can make a valid point there. But yeah, you you've seen him a lot of interviews ragging the figure at Bob Costas uh, when uh, Meredith Vieira on the Today Show. Uh, question him about the Chris Benoit thing. There was a little thing that happened there. I mean, he's, I mean, there's always been a lot of hostile stuff when it comes to Vince and being on talk shows and whatnot, discussing a lot of the stuff that went on within the WWE auspices. So Bob, Bob Costas is, is he related to Bob Costas? That's what I said. Bob Costas. <laughs> he said Bob Costas. Bob Costas. Yeah. That's what I said. Joe Montana was a quarterback. Oh, you crazy <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Whatever, Costas, Costas, who cares? Um, yeah, whatever that guy. Um, <laughs> but no, that's uh, that, that's 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 pretty much been the mo. But no, I had to play that whole thing because it tied into what we were talking about. So yeah, what did you think watching that back? That was from 1992. That's I mean, it's just that's crazy, you know. I mean, the the, the stuff that Vince got away with for years is just it's just insane. It's just insane that like. But, like, he created this whole power structure where, like, no one could touch him. He became, made himself invincible, Mike Larkin. Yes. And it's, it's like, when you have that kind of power, like, you know, it's, it, it's very easy to buy your own bullshit, buy into your own bullshit. And before you know it, you really think that you can do whatever you want. And I think that he was just always someone who lived on the edge. And once... There wasn't anybody around to tell him he couldn't do something. Not that he usually would listen, but when there wasn't anyone around, it was became okay. Now it's now it's my world. Now I'm gonna now I want to do whatever I want. I decided I'm Jesus Christ. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> okay, Kai. Um, so you ready to get into the Ashley Masaro stuff? Let's let's do it. Sure, let's do it. What do you not want to get into it? I can. No, I mean let's do it. I know you know. I'll I'll, I'll check it out. Whatever. Okay, so, <laughs> wow. A lot of stuff has went down as well with Ashley Massaro, God rest her soul, who committed suicide back in 2019. A lot of her peers had said this is what happened because of the, what happened with the WWE. So here we go. This statement reads as follows. It was reproduced verbatim as it was provided to Vice News, with the exception of one redaction. During my time at the WWE, I had observed Vince McMahon making out with other divas in the locker room. But he never paid attention to me, and I assumed I was not his type. This changed after my Playboy cover was released. I was fortunate enough to be allowed to fly in the company jet and stay at the home at the same hotels as the executives for a period of time so that I could get home faster and spend more time with my daughter. On one of these occasions, Vince was attempting to get me alone with him in his hotel room at night, and I felt extraordinarily uncomfortable. He began calling the hotel room phone and my cell phone nonstop. I called Kevin Dunn to explain the situation, and he said I should tell Vince I was not feeling well and would see him on TV the next day, so I did. Immediately after that night, Vince started writing my promos for me. Vince does not write promos for female wrestlers. That is the job of the creative department, and he certainly wouldn't have, under any normal circumstances, written a promo for me. But he did, and the promos were written with the clear intention of ruining my career. I brought the first script Vince wrote for me to the WWE employee in charge of creative at the time, Michael Hayes, and he said, you're not saying this. Who the, what the, who the fuck wrote this? And I told him that Vince did. He said, well, kid, these are the breaks, meaning that Vince wanted to end my career and destroy my reputation on my way out. He is known for this type of behavior and also did this to redact it upon her departure from WWE. In addition, after that night, each time I walked by him, he would make vulgar sexual comments that were clearly designed to to make me uncomfortable and that was in the affidavit for ashley massaro yeah um this was also Predator. okay let me let me just keep going there so you look Predator, at this, Mike Larkin, geez. i know so i mean 2006 we know about the situation with kuwait with ashley massaro where she was drugged uh, apparently by a quote-unquote soldier there and the incident that happened there in kuwait and for those who've not read it go out there and it's it's disgusting it's horrible and um, apparently recently what also came out was uh, she was in the uh, boardroom with the WWE, Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon and all that were in there. And she pretty much, they told her to keep it on the hush. Vince did check on her after this happened, but there was word for to her to keep it on the hush because, you know, then that would, uh, you know, that would ruin the relationship between the WWE and the military and what they would do for tribute to the troops uh, going forward. So, yeah. That's what wait, happened. Wait, wait, so, so let me get this straight. So uh, this, is a, this is a thing that actually happened. 
Yes, this legit happened. A soldier drugged her. Yes. Alleged. Um, uh, allegedly. Allegedly. This is what she's saying happened. That, yeah. Yes. Um, wow, that's, that's totally God, disgusting. I, I feel horrible for poor Ashley Massar. I, I really do. I mean... I mean, her friend was just on uh, News Nation talking about the incident. I have that audio if you'd like to hear that as well before we move on to other topics. No, I don't think I want to hear about that, honestly. I don't really think I want to. No, thank you. No, thank you, my buddy. Okay. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to somber the move, but yeah, this that's what's been going on in the world of wrestling. Uh, uh, what's going on in the world today, my buddy? People fighting, killing. It ain't nothing but music. Yeah, I mean that's that's just the basis of what's been going on. So yeah, I mean it's it's I mean it's like multiple multiple women, right? Yes. And he's just he's he, t- he just the most just doesn't treat women like they're people. He doesn't treat them with like they're human beings. It's he's and that's why I said he's an animal, and it's just it's disgusting it's just absolutely just disgusting disgusting behavior and uh i mean i don't I, it, it sucks too because there are a lot of people who are going to think that this is all what wrestling is about now and that's not i mean I, it's not I, the case i mean but people are going to hear these stories and be like oh the re- wrestling must be a, a totally disgusting I mean, corrupt world. On. To, to add on to your point there if i may sure uh, professional wrestling, I will say it's it's not a pretty business, folks. I mean, we're we're gone from the days of you know the rats and whatnot. You know, with with just referring to female wrestlers as rats and whatnot, we're more respectful towards women uh, to what we had back in the day. But I mean, like like you saw there back in with what he was mentioning, Ashley Massaro, and how the mood changed when she joined Playboy in two thousand seven. I mean, there was that one humiliating storyline where he degraded her and then suspended her when Ashley was going to film Cesar, uh, Survivor at the time. Yeah. Um, I also and look- I could tell you were very sensitive to that because you're already you're already starting to like argue against that when I hadn't even brought it up. And I, but I know, I know this is something that's very important to real wrestling fans that like What's that? they don't want people to get in the wrong impression. This is not that because I know because I know from you from stories you told me there are a lot of genuinely great people. In there the is a lot too. of genuinely good people. Yeah, a lot of gr- genuinely great people in the business, like people like Mick Foley, people like. Daniel Bryan, like there are a lot of oh yeah, genuinely good people in the wrestling business. So I don't, if you don't follow wrestling and you hear about these incidents, uh, don't get the wrong impression because this really is not all the wrestling world. Yeah, this there there was a lot of this going on, and and obviously Vince at one time had control over everything in, in the world of pro wrestling, but this is not how it is. This is not. And there are people. There are good people in the wrestling business, and it's not all like this anymore. So don't get the wrong impression. Well, no. To your, to your point as well. I mean, you look like what Ashley said about Playboy. If you're in the affidavit there, I mean, there was a time frame from 2004 to 2008 where the Playboy cover girls would get the women's championship matches at WrestleMania. Like that was a thing before we had like acting and all the stuff that we see the women getting into now and everything that comes into fruition from those endeavors. I mean, it's like, you know, that was the only way they really had was the Playboy centerfold and the cover girl at the time. So, I mean, it's different. And so I, I kind of see where that was going to as well. So, I mean, it's horrible. Like, I mean, folks, like the Ruthless Aggression era, like we've seen, I, I swear I started watching wrestling, but there's a lot of stuff that was not good at the time. And a lot of that stuff really makes sense with what's coming out today in regards to Vince and Kenny McMahon. So the main thing is he gets what he's to, what he deserves, justice will be served and just the fact that he's no longer on the board and he has no inclination or information and anything that goes into the overall auspices within WWE. And that's a plus because it's better for morale and it's better just as a whole for the professional wrestling world. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that, but yeah. I hope they throw the book at him. I don't care how old he is. I don't care how much of the sentence he's actually going to serve. I hope that he, serves as much as much time as he possibly can uh because i mean someone like that deserves to rot oh yeah and i'm not going to play the news nation thing i thought we would but if you don't want to hear it that's fine i'll just summarize it for everybody because it is out there her friend went on and pretty much said that everything that we're discussing today was true 
uh, Ashley told her about it, and she pretty much just said, shame on you, Vince McMahon, for knowing about it, and just, yeah. That was pretty much the, the basis of it. And then a lot of people went at her like, oh, you know, and I'm like, first of all, why would this woman lie about this? Like, why why would she? You know what I'm saying? Like, her best friend told her what happened. And you can see the emotional scars that comes from it. I mean, there's a lot of people that get into professional wrestling. And you talk about me being sensitive to this stuff. I mean, I'll be brutally honest with people because I work with a lot of talent and I've interviewed a lot of talent. It's not the best industry for a lot of people because of the grind the road and everything that goes into it but i mean at the same time unfortunate stuff like this happens it's not like how it is now but i mean it is it is a it is a very it's the entertainment business you know it is what it is unfortunately but thankfully we're in more of a positive light and a more positive direction and that's where you need in anything because a lot of this behavior is unacceptable so yeah that's pretty much all i want to say i'm sorry if i went that's on that's all i have to say about that yeah, i'm sorry if i went on a tangent on there but that it was a big topic man and i'm sorry no, i know and this is obviously this is something that's that's a really big deal for for you and for a lot of people i mean um i mean vince mcmahon is like one of the biggest figures ever in the world of wrestling so obviously this is something that's going to be huge huge news and it's i mean it's not just huge wrestling news it's huge news because this is uh this is a big. This is a big case too. I mean, this is a lot of serious allegations here, and uh, it's 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 a really it's, it's a really serious situation. And um, I hope that uh, whatever happens, justice is served. I mean, the other- obviously, everything we're talking about, obviously, again, alleged things that happen. I mean, nothing is is we can't speak in absolutes until everything is proven in a court of law, but. So this is all alleged, like Mike Larkin has, you know, reminded me. But um, allegedly, yes, yes, allegedly. So, but this is if, if it is true, it's uh, quite sickening. Uh, and I and I, the only joke I made about this was because around this time too, Tony Khan must be loving the fact that all the heat is off of him right now because of the Chris Jericho Kylie Ray NDA situation, which the reason why Kylie Ray was re- was gone from AEW and she signed an NDA quote unquote, was the fact that Chris Jericho apparently made a pass at her in the hotel room and said like there was going to be a group of people there. And uh, Chris Jericho, yeah, tried to make advances at her. And that was the reason why she was gone from AEW and Tony Khan didn't want to talk about it. And you could see when it got brought up at one of the early AEW media scrums that he was not uh, too happy to be asked that question. But I mean, yeah, so a lot of the stuff that went on with Chris Jericho, allegedly, uh, and that accusation that was made, you know, got booed him out of the building at the last AEW pay-per-view. So that's been the latest in wrestling. So the only joke is Tony Khan has got the heat off of him right now from that whole situation. So because this Vince McMahon thing just so, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. That's all I'll say, man. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just it's, well, that's a lot, man, going on. It's a lot. And it's a lot, that's a lot of stuff for your world. I'm like, Lauren, that's a lot for you. Well, well, stop, man. You know, I mean, we joke around and stuff a lot. We tease. I'm not each. joking around. I'm serious. Like, this is a lot for you. Well, no, I joke. Yeah, I know you're joking because I'm a wrestling fan. Derp, derp, derp. But no, I mean, it, dude, I know you're not the biggest wrestling fan as well. But I mean, no, for, I like wrestling. My Lord, I think they put on a great show. I enjoy going to wrestling matches and watching it on TV. I just don't watch it all the time. Okay, fair enough. But the thing is, though, it's just, it is. I always tell people, and I've always told you, unfortunately, this is, this is these are the breaks, if you will. Not like Michael Hayes told Ashley Massaro, but these are the breaks, man. It is it is what it is, but thankfully it's not what it was, as, as I like to put it. So, yeah. and But there is some good stuff going on in the world of wrestling, like I told you about the WrestleMania build. So, yeah. So, there's a lot to look forward to in the near future. So, yeah. We'll focus well, at on least we'll, At least it'll be better moving forward. I guess that's the big thing. Well, yeah. I mean, with The Rock on the board of directors, do you smell what The Rock is cooking? I mean, and it's funny to see like people like The Rock and Triple H are like the head honchos now. So, I mean, hey, it's it's going to be an interesting time. And it's already been better for morale. So, yeah. Woo! So, uh, so that's good. At least there's that. And, um, Mike Larkin, did you, since we're recording after the Super Bowl, did you watch the Super Bowl, Mike Larkin? I watched the halftime show. Uh-huh. Just the halftime show. Dude, Usher, man, friggin' him and Alicia Keys, my boo, yeah, doing all the good stuff that you got at Bads, the you don't have to calls, oh my goodness, the confessions, everything that he put in there, you know, DJ got us falling in love again, oh my god, like, oh man, Usher, Usher, oh, little John, yes. I was I was too cool to even watch this halftime show, Mike Larkin, because it's all, all that stuff is all played out, Mike Larkin, but I know, it is. I know you were liking him when he was like, you know, 
He's posing his chest right, Mike Larkin, and he's Stop it. taking the vest off, Mike Larkin, right? And he's getting he was all sweaty, Mike Larkin. I know you were getting into that, right, Mike Larkin? How about you just shut up? But no, yeah, the Super Bowl halftime show. I mean, dude, I've been a fan of Usher since the late 90s, man. You talk about the My Way. You talk about You Make Me Wanna. You talk about Slow Jam with Monica. You talk about Nice and Slow. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I'm aware of his song catalog. Thank you, Mike Larkin. I'm just saying, man, like the jams. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like this one over here didn't think I knew about LSG. Like me, Lavert, Sweat, and Gill, man. The first time you bring in Gel, Lavert, Keith Sweat, Johnny Jizzle, man. Johnny Gill doing up in the damn thing. So I mean, 9110024, my body. Like, man, that's 90s RB. Uh, you're putting it right up my alley, Maine. So yeah, that's the thing. I know. Uh-huh. I know one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. My God, no. what do you think of the whole. Uh... Taylor Swift winning the Super Bowl, Mike Larkin. What do you think of all that? Taylor Swift? What do you think of her winning the Super Bowl, Mike Larkin? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm tired of her, to be completely honest with you. I'm tired of her. Tired of seeing her grill. I, I had to ask. I know. I don't I'm I'm tired of it too. It's just I figure I mean I mean it's 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 obvious that like she's she's just being used for, you know, different corporate agendas and stuff and it's she was she was obviously the NFL was just using her to sell the game and even though it was you know making a lot of people pissed off, it was all it was all about you know eyeballs and you know making money as it always is and uh, I don't know she's it's not she's not my thing, um, but you know whatever I mean no I had the same conversation with Dazzarino when we were talking about this because he's sick of her too so I mean. The, the fact of the matter is when it comes to Taylor Swift, like I've always been like the fact that when she writes all these damn breakup songs, I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's you. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things where I'm kind of tired of the Swifties and these 12-year-old prepubescent girls just, you know, marking out for this woman. And, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, I wonder I wonder what's going to happen when they break up, Michael Hogan, right? <sighs> well, people... Some people think they're going to get married. It's like it's like they only just started dating a couple months ago. It's like they're not getting married. Like, well, here's my thing. I applaud what she does for charity. I'm not saying that before everybody goes, oh, but she does so much for charity. I, I know. I'm aware. You wrote me a letter, you idiot. I have no problem with her, what she does. Well, a lot of rich people do things for charity. I know. But they do of it because it's a tax write-off, my God. Oh, I know. They, they can pay less taxes. They don't like paying taxes. Man. I understand that. And I don't have a problem with charity. I have no problem with that either. I, all, I'm not saying you're wrong with charity, my God. You shouldn't have a problem with charity. What charities do to you, my God? Nothing. I give to charities. I give to Toys for Tots. I give to a lot of stuff. So, I mean, it's it's something that I hold dear, near and dear to my heart. But, yeah, no, this woman is just, yeah, whatever. I've never been the biggest Taylor Swift fan. I really have nothing against her, but her fan base is annoying and, and whatnot. So that's all I can really say about Taylor Swift. Like, hey, you know, we're all applying our craft in our own fashion. Let her do her thing thing, but nah, not my cup of tea. She's very toothy, my brother. You notice that? She's very toothy. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I got the K girls. Fatty over here is gonna have a heart attack. Hey, yeah, there were cones. There were cones. <laughs> of course, I'm gonna hire him. He's the only limo driver in town. I know. I just like messing with him. Finally got. We finally got our our wedding singer references in. My oh no, man! It's just no. I, I feel you, and I mean, like I said, my mom was upset because she wanted. She did not want the Kansas City Chiefs to win because she's also. Oh, tired. you want the Niners too? Yeah, she did not want the. Uh, she did not want. Oh the- my gosh, that's right there, son, right there. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm- my boo right there. That's my boo. Shut up. <laughs> the the fact, the fact of the matter is, yeah, I didn't want him to win either. I personally don't care. I I don't. I mean, I think we watched the Super Bowl one year, right? I think I was over your house. We watched the Super Bowl one year, and I was kind of like mad with it. Like we hung out at your house, but we also had the Super Bowl on too, right? We might have done that. I can't. I don't know. It's been. It's been, it's been a while. while. Like, it's been know. a while. But yeah, no. It's uh, it, it it is what it is. I mean, first of all, for those who the Kansas City Chiefs, good for them. I know everybody was happy to see Taylor Swift kissing her boo, Travis Kelsey. So I mean, whatever, whatever. You wanted to make sure that everybody knew that you know the name of a football player, Mike Logan. That's why you said that. Um, That's dude, why you dropped his name in there. Of course, I know who Travis. First of all. Just because I watch wrestling, I'm aware of my surroundings. Like when I when we talk about balling, 
an NBA baller's phenom. When we were talking about Stephon Marbury, I'm talking about Starbury. I'm talking about Charles You didn't Stewart. even know he played for the Knicks. I knew we played for the Knicks. I you was there. did not know that he played for the Knicks. I was at a Knicks game when he was there. Him, and Michael. I Dole. had to tell you that he played for the Knicks. I was at the Knicks game in 04 when they had a big old fight that happened. Then a fucking fight broke out. To quote the notorious B.I.G. party and bullshit. Were, were you? Were you, Mike Logan? I was. I was. There was a you fight. Sure about that. I'm aware you of sure my that five minutes, Mike Logan. Yes, I am. Thank you. So the fact of the matter is, yes, I'm aware of Stefan Marbury, the great Starbury folks. I wore the gear back in the day. <laughs> Mike Logan. Mike Logan. Mike Logan. Mike Logan. Johnson Bills. Mrs. Riley. And only Mrs. Riley. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? Four. I think Four. I need a, I need Try a, again, dear. <laughs> I, think, I think I need a new thicker pair of glasses, baby. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yes, no, I am aware of Starberry and the Knicks. The uh-huh. Knickerbockers, man. Oh, first of all. Uh, the, um, what, the what bockers, Mike Logan? The Knickerbockers. The what bockers? The Knickerbockers. Mike Logan, I don't think you can say that word. How about you shut up? <laughs> well, I mean, look at back in the day with Whoopi Goldberg and Eddie, her and Frank Langella back in the day with John Stout. Hey, Mike Logan, mama mia, I'm Frank Langella, Mike Logan, put the pizza in the oven and the spicy meat the bowl. Mama Logan. mia, tutti frutti, magnifico. <laughs> So, yes, that movie, and also had our jam in it, Coolio. It's all the way live. It's all the way live. It's all the way live. R.I.P. Rip Coolio on love. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, that's that's pretty much been what the ongoing is now, the basic things, the wrestling in the Super Bowl, and also the fact that you don't think I know about that LSG life with my body all over your body. It's your body, baby. So you still butthurt about that, my Logan? Oh, because the fact of the matter is you send me these songs like I don't know about that 90s R&B life, baby, is my thing. Uh-huh. That's uh-huh. my thing. Uh-huh. Because, I don't talk- uh-huh. because I don't talk to you, it doesn't mean I'm not listening to a lot of the stuff and I ain't about that life. And I got other peeps that I could talk about this with, man. You know what I'm saying? I got my people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Why don't you go talk to Kyle some more, my Logan? You and Kyle can go talk. That's my and, boy. Uh, That's my boy, man. Yeah, I, you and him go talk at the nursery. You and him. Oh, God. That was my boy. I can't complain. Don't even talk about my boy Kyle like that, man. He's doing his thing now. He's living the dream right now. Good for him at the New York Wrestling Connection. Because I know you're just saying that. To try, you, want me to, you want me to get all bowed up? My, like I said, oh, you know, I'm allowed to talk with other people. Durr, 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 durr. I know what you're doing, my fucking. A little jealous ones still envy, man. You know, you're pulling on your fat Joe right now. You know, so it is what it is. You know, Mike Logan, I did, I was gonna I was gonna tell you I was gonna start off the show by telling you because it, if we weren't doing the uh, the Vince McMahon stuff, is that uh, I'm getting a little bit of the of the I'm 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 not doing good this weekend. I had a I've been getting ripped all weekend and I'm getting a little bit of the Dunlap back, Mike Logan. You know what I'm saying, dog? And, oh, you got uh, the Dunlap disease. I'm sorry, to hear Dunlap that. disease, Mike Logan. I don't know, man. I just I can't stop eating, Mike Logan. This is crazy, Mike Logan. Manja, homie, manja. Manja, uh, getting a little bit of punta dut, Mike Logan. Absolutely, but no, that's the problem. It's just what happens. So you just you can't stop the hunger, man. Is it because just, you get? I just, I just, oh man, just pizza, people, man. Well, pizza, just, man. Well, is it just because you're high and you got the munchies? <laughs> it's the pizza, man. <laughs> you're high and you got the munchies because you can't stop yourself. Portion control, my brother. Portion control. Oh, you know what? Don't don't give me. You just you know start lecturing me on my podcast now. My like, it's my goddamn podcast. Like, it's like, our goddamn podcast. Uh, mine, yours, ours. What are we a freaking movie now? This is a, was this a movie about kids? If we movie about, a, <laughs> movie about fifteen kids, yours, mine, and ours. Who was in that, Mike Logan? Oh, geez, I know who you're talking about, but don't make me think. But I'm aware. Like Dennis Quaid. Yes, that was a. <laughs> yes, Dennis Quaid. Your girl. Yours, mine, and ours. Oh my lord. They should have. They should have named that movie. Get. My wife needs to get off her back. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying, Mike Larkin? You um, know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Mike Larkin? It's like, maybe you should have stopped after, like, four, maybe. Oh, God. It's just, well. Wow. Mike Larkin, I bet you it's like throwing a pencil down a hall right now. Just, Good Lord. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Good Lord. Didn't hire a gay Frenchman to be your teammate. Sweet Lord, and hired gay <laughs> Frenchman to be your teammate. Uh, uh, oh, I'm starting to spin. Get a little dizzy. Anus. Oh, Ricky, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. But, yeah, no, that's – um, it's crazy to think, like, we talk about all these things, 
that go into, you know, what we mentioned there with the uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey and everything that goes into that. And also the fact that you're gaining weight. I mean, it, it is, I mean, knowing you. I, I mean, didn't say I was gaining weight. I, just, I was getting a little bit of done lab. That's all. My it's that's okay that. if you're gaining weight. It's okay, man. Like, you know. Mike Logan, it's. Let's not, Mike Logan. All right, let's go. Okay. You get a little too excited about this, Mike Logan. Okay? No, I'm just saying, if you want to keep eating, do your thing, man. Mike Logan. I mean, Mike he, Logan. He I can... friggin' fries and like a friggin' frosty or whatever the hell. I've seen. Mike Logan, still... you're still, you're still technically you have more body, you have a bigger uh, body to fat index percentage than I do here still. So let's not, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You what know? the hell are you talking about? You got more percentage body fat wise than I do. So how do you know that? Because <laughs> Mike Logan, I know that. Mike Logan. No, you I don't. I can tell, dog. My fucking, I can tell. Dog. No, you can't. <laughs> I can't. You're blind. All right, what is it? What's what's your fat to muscle body index? I body? don't fucking know. I don't pay attention to it. <laughs> exactly. That's why you're fat, my fucking. That's why you're fat, dog. No, you just want to reverse it just because of the fact I'm that I'm talking to you. I put my thing down and I flip it and reverse it. That's what you're doing. You're trying to work. <laughs> for you. My fucking. My fucking. My fucking. <laughs> It's your freaking freaking round here. You're looking a little heavy these days, my boy. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Neither am I. Neither am I, dog. What's That's up? It. Neither am I. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What's up? What's, what's up? up with what? <laughs> Good Lord, man. I, I don't know, dog. I don't know, man. He just, you're crazy, dog. You know what I'm saying, dog? You're crazy, man. Freaking, <laughs> you gotta cut down on the eating, like, like you know what I'm saying? Dog? I'm not fucking eating anything. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, not now because we're on a podcast. What the fuck is wrong with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Good lord. So, um, I don't know. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? What else is going on, Mike Logan? I mean, I think we pretty much covered a lot of the general consensus and the basis of what's really, really been missing with the Super Bowl and what we really saw with uh, the wrestling allegations. There it really hasn't been a lot going on within the world. I mean, we really covered everything, man. And I think just the fact that the allegations, the allegations, allegations, and the fact that we really got to put this out into the forefront today, I think is awesome. Like to really just to bring awareness to it as well as just give our thoughts and opinions on it. I mean, we always have fun with this show, but at the same time, we can be serious and really go into and dive into the matters that are really out there. You know what I'm saying? And I think if we get a vocal motions and elicit reactions, that's the main thing with this show. And we appreciate everyone who's really been for the ride with us for all this time. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to, I was trying to make this more lighthearted because this was really tough. It to was. Through. It was for me too. Like I'm reading this and I'm like, Ugh. like I mean, we made some jokes about our weight and everything today, folks. And I'll be you honest, you made jokes about my weight, Mike Logan, which I have, I was very offended by. I don't appreciate that, Mike Logan. All I brought up was that I had been eating a little bit more than normal, and you went right to, oh, you gained some weight. Or burr, 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 I'm be you completely know. honest. You want me to be completely honest with you? Yeah. Okay, I've been losing some weight myself because I was up there too. So don't even worry about it. I just wanted to bust your balls. Uh-huh, yeah. It's, you love doing things with guys' balls, huh, Mike Logan? I, you know, they were cones. I just like messing with you, man, because they, they were cones. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me borrow your credit card. No, why? Because if, if you don't, I want to talk about it with your bar. Bar. <sighs> Mike Logan, do you like Flock of Seagulls? Oh, but I can see you do. <laughs> I Okay, actually, I do have one other topic that I'd like to discuss with oh. you. Oh, okay. So there's been a social media post of what the greatest R&B song is. And there was a lot of people that said, and they made videos about this, that Return of the Mac is the greatest R&B song ever. Would you agree with those sentiments? It's it's definitely up there. I thought you were going to say, though, I believe I can fly. No, not at all. You know, I, no? I, okay, hold on. All right, we're, we're going to go here. I like that song. It's a very inspirational song. Space Jam is the jam, pun intended, uh, from a movie standpoint in that soundtrack. But no, Return of the Mac has that flow. It has that vibe. It has that beat. And it's more, you know, fun. It's more one of the club jams. You know what I'm saying? You can groove to and do your thing thing with. Our, uh, the R. Kelly one is nice. And it's, again, it sh has its purpose. It evokes emotions. It elicits reactions, much like Return of the Mac does. But, you know, I, I cannot put, I believe I can fly up there. Not for me. Okay. So you think that's the right choice then? 
is what you're saying. Well, dude, I've been a Mark Morrison fan of that song since my mom played the CD single back in 97. You know what I'm saying? Because she had that CD single. And for me, listening to the seven minutes of that, and then, we, you know, you and I, when our friendship started, you've been a fan of that jam. Like, hey, hey, did you guys know? I don't know if you guys do this. My mom used to work at PLI, so I used to get all the CD signals. So every time I get a chance to, I remind people when I got the CD signals. Every time I get a chance to talk about music that I listen to, because... I don't know if you know this, but my mom used to work at WBLI, the radio station. I don't know if you knew this. Well, the fact <laughs> of the matter is, folks, yes, listening to that song for over 20 plus years now, it really stands the test of time and it holds up. And I mean, I had this conversation with my boy, Chris. Shout out to the moneymaker. Like, a lot of the songs don't have a lot of the same meaning like they did back in the day. Because right now, it's just like, when you hear music nowadays, it's just like, all right here this week on the next week there's not a lot of the timeless classics like we had growing up yep yep word word absolutely you know my luck and my mom was pretty cool too my luck and like when she would drop me off at school she would tell me to watch myself my luck you know what i'm saying because there's danger my luck that never happened that was my mom and you can go fuck yourself so you can't <laughs> prove that you can't prove that my luck stop it but no, it's just <laughs> God, stop it. Let me get oh, one of your tots. Eat it. God, give me some of your tots, Napoleon. <laughs> Such an underrated movie. I still can't believe that's 20 years old this year. Good lord. Mm. That infamous dance, Jamiroquai, friggin' uh, canned heat, man. Still this boogie is for real. I dream my fantasy and lightning. No, no, no. Like the whole thing is just amazing. Oh man. Take it back, man. But no, let's do 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 do. Take me back. Oh, Mike Larkin. That's what we got. To Mike Larkin. Cole Weathers died. Mike Larkin. Oh, yes. That's right. Cole Weathers. Cole Weathers died, dog. Oh, oh my God. I can't believe you forget that. forget Cole Weathers. Oh, my God. Mike Larkin. Yo, Apollo, Mike Larkin. Come on, dog. Hey, yo, Apollo. <laughs> you sure you want to go through with this? You know? It ain't nothing, Rock. And then he comes out to friggin' living in America and then friggin' does the dance and it's awesome. And then he's like, you will lose. <laughs> Just, then, you uh, want to ring the bell? Ding. 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 <laughs> I may have taught you everything, but I, I mean, I've taught you some, but I haven't taught you everything, Stallion. <laughs> what of the premier movie franchise yes we'll leave you guys on this as we were just we started off gloomy but there still is a lot of goodness in this one even though we did have the passing of the late great carl weathers mr apollo creed uh mr <laughs> chubb r.i.p dog r.i.p mr chubbs of a happy gilmore Oh, God. And then he made the brief appearance of Little Nicky as the spin instructor in heaven. It's all in the hips. It's all. My lucky. My lucky. How is he supposed to work with this here, you know, jungle music, my lucky? You know what I'm saying, dog? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is. They don't like you. Maybe that's why they don't like you. Maybe it's not you like them. Or maybe it's them not liking you. <laughs> Uncle Paul and his blatant racism. Oh, God. And then, the, <laughs> and then the fact he's like, I'm going to break your mouth. You know what? Can I have a job? All you have to do is that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <sighs> oh. And, then, and then they buy him a robot. They buy him a robot and he Happy birthday, Polly. They, <laughs> they turn, he turns it into a sex robot. Happy birthday, Polly. Happy birthday, Paul. Hey, how'd you change the voice in that thing? She loves me. <laughs> my girl. My girl. She's my girl. <laughs> Happy birthday, Polly. Paulie's Polly. <laughs> gonna be the worst fucking character. I'm just, me and Dylan must have talked about this too. Shout out to my boy Dylan. He's gotta be Polly is like the biggest fucking deadbeat character and all he does is shit on Rocky. And yet Rocky lets him live in his house. Freaking gives him a job. Rocco, I can't. Like, <laughs> well, look at Rocky Balboa. Rocky Balboa. He's like, Rocco, I can't take this anymore. You're living backwards. You're living backwards, Rocco. Hey, Rocco. God. Like, yeah, he gives him a job at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, he just quarter for his, his dick. 
Rocky, Rocky seems to have paid a much bigger price than he intended to just to, just to bang this girl. Now he's got this, he's got this freaking deadbeat in his life for the rest of his life. And then, and then Adrian dies. Remember in the later movies, Adrian dies of cancer. Yes. And he's just stuck with Pauly for. <laughs> well, well, the fact of the matter, then he's like, Rocco, you're living, like I said, Rocco, you're living backwards. I treated her bad. You treated her good. I don't need this. <laughs> no little Marie. It ain't all right. <laughs> hey, oh, don't you, you little Marie. You used to hang out near the Italian hoagie shop. Aren't you little little Marie? Marie? First of all, if you're gonna do it right, sir, hey, aren't you little Marie that used to hang out by the Italian ogie shop? <laughs> Screw you, creepo. Uh, but no, Carl Weathers from Rockies one through four. You know, I gotta know that that man beat me. You know what I'm saying? Just the whole drama and everything that he put into that character. One of his best roles ever, from one through four. And just the eye of the tiger, getting Rocky back to beat Mr. T. Clubber Lang, what's your prediction for the fight? Pain. And everything. It's like, uh, hey, woman. Hey, hey woman. woman. Why don't you come over to my apartment later and see what it's like to be with a real man. You want it? You got it. And then he freaking yeah. jumps at him. We're live. Yeah. We're live. Rocky Five, man. Mm. He wasn't in Rocky Five, though. No, I'm saying, Tom, I'm just saying, that was one of the best, though. Tommy Gunn only fights in the ring. Yeah, yeah, Marie's Marie's outside. Outside. Let's oh, yeah. Right. Let's do it. We're live. We're live. But that was the thing too. Just the memory from one through four. Like for me, I thought he was probably one of the best characters of that. The great antagonist to the Rocky protagonist, the underdog fighting from beneath, and then he eventually respects yep. him. Well, uh, you know that 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 whole character was based on Muhammad Ali, right? I mean, you know that that's the original Rocky movie. Rocky is actually based on a real fighter. He's actually based on a guy named Chuck Webner, who was nicknamed the Baltimore Bleeder, who actually nearly beat Muhammad Ali in a match. It was a similar situation. He was his underdog nobody, and he nearly beat Muhammad Ali, and that's what the whole original basis of the Rocky franchise was based on. He actually had to pay... Uh, he actually lost a lawsuit to Chuck Webner because he, he based a lot of things on his life and didn't uh, give him credit for it or anything, so... But um, but yeah, I mean that's all Muhammad Ali. That's all, you know the char- the the charisma, the riz, as the kids would say, Mike Larkin. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm down with the lingo. That's, that's all. That's all Muhammad Ali, dog. First of all, riz is the dumbest fucking thing ever. And and number two, I mean, for me, yes, I agree. And yes, I knew about what you're referring to. So I mean, that's just great that you could take from art imitating life, so to speak, and get that into the overall fruition of what we saw within those films franchises. And so, Muhammad Ali even had James Brown actually play. From one of his matches. Well, which is the time we're living in America, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that was, that was a real thing that Muhammad Ali actually did. So that was another way they actually imitated Muhammad Ali. I think for me, if you had to pick a fa- one of your favorite Rockies, because there were six, and then we get to the Creed series, the one and two, what was your favorite Rocky? It depends on the day that you ask me, because some days I'll say Rocky three. Okay. And some days I'll say Rocky four. I mean, we like Rocky Five, and I know that's the least one of the fan, the one that's the least popular one. Yeah, yeah, but we we quote it all the time because well, I mean, there's some there's some decent minds in there. Yes. Uh, see, for me, if I had to choose, like, I would go Rocky Two or Rocky Three because Rocky Two he wins it, and then just everything that goes into it, you know, Adrian getting sick and the build to him winning. But Rocky Three was just so great because Mr. T was freaking awesome in that movie. Hey, woman. I mean. That was he was so perfectly. I mean, you talk about Carl Weathers being perfectly cast as Apollo. Yep, Mr. T is perfectly cast as Cobra Lang. My God, I mean, oh, come on, he's perfect for that part, right? Oh, great. Right? I mean, come on, man. Well, Mr. T was also very popular at the time, and it fit. It just it fits so well. You know, what I'm saying I'm gonna bust you up. Go for it. You know, my God, it's interesting. Like when we talk about like our relationship, right? I always said that like I was Rocky, but you were Apollo Creed. Mm-hmm. Because then I'd have to go drive my really nice car through a tunnel, listening to No Easy Way Out, having having um, cinematic uh, montage flashbacks of all the, of our moments together, with tears in my eyes, trying to decide if I should listen to my wife or listen to my heart, Mike Logan. You know what I got to say to that? What's that, Mike Logan? I just want to know why <laughs> there's no easy way out. There's no there's shortcut. No shortcut. Oh. oh, boy. Give it a 
you can't do <laughs> it's a cheesy but it is a great scene that's one of the iconic scenes that's a great song like Come on, don't be hating on that song i don't, don't hate on robert tepper i don't robert tepper, dog i don't it is good are you aware of robert tepper mike Logan? i am yes are you sure about that, Mike Logan? Yes, I'm aware. <laughs> oh, God. But yes, no. <laughs> Apollo, first of all, um, for me, I've always known him from the Rocky movies and, of course, Chubbs and Happy Gilmore, which was hilarious just because of everything that went into the Happy Gilmore movie. going to start calling you Chubbs because of all that weight you're going to gain, Mike Logan. You know what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> I'm Stop it. But no, I mean, I'm looking forward. I, I mean, I'm looking forward just to... I think for me, it's just to see just I'm going to probably reminisce and watch all those movies again, just because I, I mean, it was sad. I mean, first of all, when he when he dies in uh, Happy Gilmore and then he plays We've Only Just Begun to Live like that was awesome. Like, you know, just that whole thing. And then the cameo in Little Nicky was funny. I mean, he was in The Mandalorian, but everything that Carl Weathers did, he was just so good. And do you do you remember um, I was talking about this with uh, somebody else, too. Um, back in the day when AMC had Rocky Fest, yes, me and Dylan would like to sit and watch Rocky Fest. Sometimes we don't come on, we just sit and we just w- try to watch as much as we could of it because they used to play like when the, back when they, there was only five on cable. I think AMC had all of them and they had rights to all of them, so they would play the full marathon of all the Rocky movies like all day. Yeah, and you could just sit in front of the TV and just watch Rocky all day. Um, I mean, those movies, you're right, are just so freaking inspirational. Like, you get you get jacked up. You get pumped up when you're watching those movies. Like, I don't care what anyone says. I don't know if they think they're cheesy or they're corny, whatever. You get Mike Larkin. I get so... Uh, my, the testosterone goes up to a million, Mike Larkin. Every time you watch those movies, dog. You know what I'm saying, dog? Oh, great. And I mean, like, he was in Predator. He was in so many great movies. That's right. He was in Predator, dog. That's right, dog. Action Jackson, Mike Larkin. Yes, Action Jackson. Yes, you remember Action Jackson? I do. Yes. Only, are there only the real ones are Action Jackson. No, I like, I gotta make sure if you know it or not. Dog. Stop know. it. So yes, <laughs> those movies are excellent. But for me, I always remember when I look at Carl Weathers, just like and he, he was in Arrested Development too, right? He was the acting coach in Arrested Development. Yes, yes, he was. That's an under. That's an underrated show, Mike Larkin. In a lot of ways, um. It might be a better comedy than The Office. I mean, it, it invented what The Office did. Like it invented the docu comedy. Yeah, I mean, a and lot I think of, in a lot of ways it's actually a stronger show. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people office. always compl- like will just rave over The Office, like they do Friends. Like you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I I it was just you know what it was okay. It had it had its moments, but uh, once uh, Steve Carell left, that 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 show was never the same. I hear you 100% because Steve Carell was the embodiment of that show. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, dog. Did you know that Steve Carell was in Bruce Almighty, Mike Larkin? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I'm aware. <laughs> and then Evan Almighty came out, and it was horrible. My uh, Larkin, did you know that I actually saw there was a they did a YouTube video I saw. I should probably send it to you about the cable guy, and that uh, it was originally supposed to be a much different movie, and Chris Farley was supposed to be in it, and like the reason one of the reasons like why it became the movie it was was because like. Judd Apatow like rewrote or Judd Apatow was on it and like Ben Stiller was involved in it, even though he, and he like ben, I think Ben Stiller actually directed it. Did you know like there's a whole interesting the like, backstory with the cable guy? Nobody remembers the cable guy. Nobody knows what to do with it, but we get it, right, my Logan? Because that's it's actually a very underrated film. For me, like first of all, the fact I can imagine Chris Farley playing that role, but I also at the same time, Jim Carrey did that part so well, and Matthew Broderick played his part so well. Like everything fit and it molded together, and it just showed like how he was raised within the TV, and you know what I'm saying, yeah. and like he really didn't have that attention from his parents, and so he it was that. originally supposed to be like a buddy comedy, it wasn't supposed to be dark at all. 
uh, to be honest with you, the direction that they went with Jim Carrey's character and Matthew Broderick's character, again, trying to find that friendship and that longing for attention, like it worked very much better than what they were originally going to do. Tell you what, I think the Kale guy also might actually be my favorite Matthew Broderick movie now. Man, I, I mean, we touch we touch upon Ferris Bueller, and I know how you feel about Ferris Bueller. I can't, I can't watch it anymore, my God. I, can't I do know, it. I know. I can't. I, I simply know. can't. I can't. I understand that, but yeah, you can't deny the cinematic genius that that film was, and just the awesomeness of that movie. Uh, for me, like Hello, Steven, I came to give you the cable, Steven. Steven, I'm gonna go do some cable, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, take out the chest, Steven. So yeah, I mean the fact that. The fact of the matter. When they're playing the baseball game, I fucking give me the ball, Steven. <laughs> I want to be on Steven's team. So, Jack Black, my fucking Jack Black is in it, dog. I know he is. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but that's the thing too. Is like with Matthew Broderick. Like I've always said this. I know. I know people say what they will about Inspector Gadget, the first one with him and Rupert Everett. That one is way better than the second one with French Stewart that was just direct to DVD and it sucked. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go, Gadget, go. Like the first movie was good. The second one sucked. Have you you've seen the first Inspector Gadget, right? I saw the first Inspector Gadget in the theater, by Clarkin. Look at you go. In Europe, it's quite natural for two men to That's not head. how it goes. <laughs> In Europe, okay, Mr. Genius, you go then. In Europe, it's not unnatural for two men to share a bed. Well, that's why I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> it's not unusual for two men to share a bed. <laughs> and he's just looking all like, so I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but I like to sleep in the nude. Okay, yeah. And then he's just like, okay. And then he's like, I said over easy. <laughs> Throwing the freaking eggs. <laughs> what did he say before that, Mike Logan? What did he say? What? I like to sleep in the nude, and then he said, uh, "Okay, uh, it just no." He that's what he said. He goes, "I like. To, I hope you don't mind. I like to sleep in the nude." And he's like, uh, "Okay, uh, okay." okay. <laughs> Mike Logan, I just want to tell you, I really appreciate you doing the homework, dog. It was really nice. You know, I know it's I know it's hard. You know, not having a life, so I appreciate you know doing the homework for me. I appreciate the dog, and you know. I just want you to know that you're doing the homework for me. Help me get, you know, help me go to a lot of parties and, you know, try a lot of things and maybe get laid. And I just want to appreciate that for you, dog. I appreciate you doing that for me, dog. You know what I'm saying? Dog? Thank you for doing my homework, dog. Uh, okay. And fuck off. Man. That's <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, is there anything else you wanted to talk about, Michael Logan? No, I think we forgot to hit the nail on the head. And all I can really say is rest in peace to Carl Weathers, man. That's all I really can say because he was a, he was a great actor and a great mind, and he really did his thing with any role that he was uh, that he was in. And I, I really say just hey, go back and watch his movies. Go back and watch the Rocky movie. Go back and watch Predator. Go watch The Mandalorian. Go watch Happy Gilmore. Go just watch anything with Carl Weathers because you will see just genuinity and authenticity within his work. So, yeah. I think we hit the nail on the head today, homie. I know it was a little, a little, uh, little not as lighthearted as it was at the beginning because a lot of yeah. uh, serious stuff was happening. But you know, we we do our best to cover what goes out there in the world. So we hope you enjoyed what we gave you today, and we hope to be in a little bit better spirits in the next one. And uh, goes to kiss the sky, Mike Larkin. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. <laughs> so my homie G. Now, you have been doing some things as well with your band, Cool Spectrum. Where can we check you out? And also, you weren't you just on TV as well with the uh, with the blues there and what you're yeah, doing? Yeah, my hockey team, dog. We got a donation from the NHL, which is really cool. And, um, and yeah, and so we were on TV, got written up in the, in the NHL.com, and uh, that was really cool. And, um, and yeah, and... Uh, so we're doing the socials now, or are we doing what are we doing? Yeah, now? We're, we're gonna do the socials, socials now, but I just wanted you to promote yeah. that out there because I'm happy for it. Oh yeah, thank you, dog. I appreciate that. Thank you for the re- thank you for recognizing my clock, and I appreciate you, dog. You know, I noticed you. Notice in me. Uh, He's so dangerous. That girl is so dangerous. That girl is. A- <laughs> oh my goodness! So yes, promote. Yes, can you? 
promote the social media, you son of a bitch. On Instagram at Steve at Stevie Nicks with a C and does the C not a K. N I C S. Uh-huh. Um on the Twitter at uh real SM show at the real SM show one. Uh-huh. So don't get confused with any of the handles. Mine is the OG original proper handle, the original real the real at the real SM show one. Uh-huh. My login just want to make sure you knew that. Sure. Um, right here. <laughs> All right here. Uh, on Twitter, uh, I did Twitter. Twitter is at Steve Nix SM. Uh-huh. Also, if if um, actually no, I changed that one though. That's the one I changed the real SM show one. Um, Alan, at a uh, SNAT pod on Twitter. Yes, sir. At Golden Age Pod on Twitter. Yes, sir. Um. And then you know the Facebooks and the and the website and all that. Um, at Islanders Real Islanders Pride on Twitter, Real Real Isles Pride on Twitter, and uh, Islanders Pride on YouTube. If you like hockey and stuff like that, uh-huh. um, and yeah, um, I can't think of anything else. Am I missing anything like Larkin? You can check out SM Show Podcast and SNM Fan Central on Facebook. Stephen Mike right. Show com. Get subscribed to the YouTube channel, Stephen Mike Show Clips. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel, Mike Larkin 92, halfway to 800. So let's keep getting it up. Let's keep going and going and going. I appreciate those who've been on this journey with me thus far. You can check out LFCfights.com for beauty, strength, and dominance and the latest LFC 38 Angels and Little Devils event. They happen on Valentine's Day at the FSW Arena in Henderson, Nevada, a.k.a. Las Vegas, Nevada. You can check out all these shows on the Stephen Mike Show.com website from Shooting the Breeze, On the Mic with Mike, SM Show. Everything that goes into what we do here at this platform, you can check out uh, on the YouTube channel, Pop Culture History Podcast. You can check out the LFC Podcast. You can check out on the Michael Mike. You can check out Stephen Mike. You can check out all more great episodes, Stephen X Hockey Experience, Stephen X Experience. We're going to be doing more of those. We're going to be doing Golden Age very soon. Uh, just stay tuned. It's 2024, and we look to put out more great content for those, and also probably be putting up some past episodes so you all know what we are about. So. All I can say is just thank you guys really very much for uh, listening and tuning in and getting your ears filled with that goodness, them eargasms with our mellow accents, if you will. No diggity, no doubt. So, yeah, that, that's really all I could say. And I uh, just I appreciate you, man. Do you have any other things you would like to add, my homie G? Ugh, that's gross, Mike Logan. Yeah, Sticking it in people's ears. What's wrong with you, dog? Ugh. Degenerate. Ugh. Anyway, um, what's the um, – we have an email too, right? We never use, right? It's like SNM show. SNM show pod or SNM show at gmail.com or SNM show pod at gmail.com. We don't have it. Um, I made one. No, no, no. Remember I made one. I got to find it. Let, Cause I, we should do like an email contest of some sort with that email address. I'm thinking we'll talk about that later though. Uh, okay. And, um, and yeah, thanks everyone for listening and, um, you know, be good to one another. And, um, just remember that uh, Mike Larkin is a very, very gross boy, and I do not uh, – his opinions are his own. So if you get offended by any of the things he says about sticking it in people's ears or wanting to put Jesus in, inside of you, um, you can you can write to him and not me. Um, I would never do that. I am an upstanding citizen, and I would n- – I think all sex is wrong, Mike Larkin. I just don't know. I, if you like sex, you're a sinner, Mike Larkin. You know, I just want you to know that. So Absolutely. God is crying. Abstin- God is crying, Mike Clarkin. He's watching you and he's crying. Okay. Abstinence that makes the heart grow fonder. This one. That's right, Mike Clarkin. Of course. That's right. You're 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 a disgusting pervert. I would never ever, Mike Clarkin. I would never. And like, ugh, and t- touching yourself, Mike Clarkin. Anyway, 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 you do you, homie. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. See you later. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. Fuck off. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. <laughs>